I survived and I'm forever the survivor of a school shooting. On April 20th, 1999, I was a 17-year-old junior in a high school in the suburbs of Denver called Columbine. I was in my fifth hour choir class when we started to hear popping sounds from a distance. We didn't think it was anything, but in a matter of a few minutes, students were running down the hallway outside our classroom. And one student came in and told us there were shooters. At that point, most of the students ran out of the classroom, but some of us, including myself, stayed where we were, unsure of what to do. And as the sound of gunfire and explosions drew closer and closer, eventually about 40 of us barricaded ourselves into a small teacher's office. We didn't know exactly what was happening, but most of us assumed we were in the final moments of our lives. And so in this tiny, cramped, hot room, some students began to call family members to say goodbye. And we held each other and we waited for nearly three hours. Eventually, the SWAT team came and helped us evacuate. Our path of escape took us within a few feet of some of our recently fallen classmates. And the trauma of the moment hit like a flood. We were safe, but so many others were not. Two fellow classmates had shot and killed 12 students and a teacher, injuring many more before ultimately taking their own lives. I survived, and I'm forever the survivor of a school shooting. That doesn't leave you, that stays with you. And initially, I was a person who felt this deep sense of responsibility to take action. I shared my story a lot. I talked about the legacy of my friends who died that day, I gave tons of media interviews. I found a lot of healing in many of those moments. But at times, the, the sense of mission or providing answers was less than productive. I think about my fellow survivors that day and how a similar trauma can affect people so differently. I have guilt around the fact that I don't deal with the anxiety or PTSD-like symptoms that many of my friends have dealt with for years, even to this day. So for me, sharing my story was something empowering, but for many survivors, it wasn't. At times you want to avoid that part of your story that hurts the most, but you really can't. And so being a survivor of a school shooting has affected my whole life. In the years since, I've often sat with people in the midst of their own trauma, and I'm able to be uniquely present in those moments because of what I experienced at Columbine. Professionally, I work on community-based issues and human rights challenges, and I, I know my decision to do that is rooted in my experience at Columbine that day. Being a survivor lives with me as I navigate parenthood as the father of four kids, the oldest of whom started high school this year. And so parenthood is this act of trust at so many times already, but being a survivor can press that to new levels. So there are mornings when I drop off my son at high school and I say, Elijah, I love you, I'll see you tonight. And I know he can't possibly understand the scenarios that run through my mind as he walks away. I've been recently struck watching survivors of new school shootings as they emerge and share their raw stories. I ask myself, how is this still happening? And what more could we have done? You look at their faces and you see yourself in them. You know how much they have in front of them, and you wish there was someone that could tell them there's someone who understands how you feel, because we do. I had a friend recently remind me that as human beings, we are meaning makers and meaning seekers. Almost 20 years after I survived the shootings at Columbine High School, I'm still wrestling with making meaning out of this part of my story. But more than anything, I'm simply grateful to have that chance.